Okay, um, we're going to, from this image, uh, recreate this Vogue cover of Beyonce. Um, now, what you would do if you were doing this for print, you would draw a mask around Beyonce, a mask off that area, usually using the pen tool or there's other tools that you can use to make selections in Photoshop. Then once you've done that, you would make that selection into what's called a clipping path, which makes the um, background transparent, although it's still there. Then you would import it in something like Adobe InDesign and then add all the text. Now, I've got another video of how to do that or how to basically do that. There's a little bit more detail that you would do. I just do it very quickly to give you an idea how you would do that. But it's actually drawing around it with a pen tool is your, you know, your best option or using other tools that help you do that. We're just going to do it all in Photoshop and create all the text and then export it as an image file, a TIFF, and then import it into InDesign. So um, what I'll do is get going. So first of all, here's the image here. I need to just check the size of the image. So if we go to image and image size, I need to make sure, um, you know, what the size is. So if I go here and it's got um, A4, that's what I'm looking for. In this case, I'll do it 170 so I can do it for a laser printer. And I just click OK. So now it's created in A4 size. So I know the boundaries um, of the um, A4 size image to lay everything up. So the first thing I'm going to do is to um, mask this off. So how you would do that, very simple in new versions of Photoshop. You go into Select. You go to Subject. Now what it will do is automatically select um, the subject or the foreground does quite a good job of it. If I zoom in, uh, some bits it's missed here. You see the ear, ear. So what I can do is go up here where it's got these select tools and use the quick select tool. And I can just, you know, add that here and just work on it. So ideally, you'd probably go around it, tidy it up. There's lots of bits here where you could do that. Um, again, these things sort of take time retouching. Um, it's a bit of an art, um, but you would go around, retouch it up, change your brush size um, up here um, and just tidy it all up. OK, so once you've done that, um, you can use you know, some more powerful tools and they are going back to the select menu. You go back to um, select mask. And then he puts this mask on. This is, you know, quite red. This will give you a good contrast between the foreground and the background. So there's a number of tools here that will help you. You can tweak all these and try and approve, you know, how it's going to look. There's got feathering. It has things where it smooths things out, you know, change the radius. So there's lots of different things you can do there to change it all around. You can change, you know. Um, how it looks you can have all these different things I'm just going for this overlay one um, so you can tweak all these and also there's some tools here so um, if you wanted to you know add things so if I look up here I could go to the second one down and that would you know try and you know differentiate bits in the background here uh, you know, and you can take it around and I'll find um, yeah, bits and pieces where it's been missed off. Um, so you can do things like that. OK, so it's just a matter of going around and sort it all out. And then there's this other tool that that kind of does the opposite to that. OK, so once you've done all that, what you would do is go down to where it's got output selection and you'd go new layer with layer mask. Then you click OK. And what it's done, it's created a layer. It's masked off the layer. Here's the mask and here's the image. So all the checkered area here is transparent. And this was the old original image. So we're good to go now to create a background. So at the bottom of the layers panel, there's an icon for creating new fills and adjustment layers. Click on that and go for solid color. 
um, and then I'll go and select the color, this gray color, click OK. If you see here, it's above the image. I drag the layer down so it's underneath. Now, um, I'll get the Move tool or press V on my keyboard. And what I can do is click on Beyonce, the, and I can just drag out because I think she's just a little bit bigger on here and I can maybe position it a little bit better. Uh, click the tick at the top or press Enter or Return on your keyboard. Once I've done that, I'll put the Vogue on. So I click Teeth Text, so I click anywhere here. I'll type in uh, Vogue. Now, I think the nearest I can get to what looks like a Vogue is something called Baskerville Old Face. So, um, but you might find a better one. Um, but I think Vogue have their own font. I've got that. I'll move this just up here for the time being. And then I'll just drag this out. Again, you don't need to press the shift key these days. Back in the day, you did. I'll position it until it's okay. Now, what you would really do if you're doing these these uh, layouts is use it, you know, some sort of guide uh, to do it. So you can, in Photoshop, you know, come down and say show guides and you can have rulers or a grid system to lay things out proportionally. But, you know, that's what you would do if you want to do this, you know, for real. So what I need to do is if I press the shift key, it will elongate it. So that's what I want to just give the feel of the how the uh, the actual Vogue font looks. And then I'll just take this up here. Now, once I've done that, I need to reposition it down the layers. I'll drag it so it's underneath, and now it's gone behind her head. So if I go back to here, what I need to do is I'll just do this power 13 first, and then we can just make a start, I'll give you an idea of how you can lay everything out. Okay, so I'll come back here. Uh, first of all, I want to do that power 13. So what I would do is go for the shape tool. I would then drag out a shape here. Um, if I do press the shift key, it gives a little bit more control to sort of customize it. Uh, I'll just bring it in a little bit more. Uh, once I've got that, um, I can move that up here. And what I can do, uh, where it's got the properties here, I can type in minus 45 like that. And then I, oops, moved the wrong one there. I'll see if I can just move it to the top here to give me more control. And then I move it, you know, sort of across here. It's got 45. The next thing I'll do is, again, T for text. I'll put power 2013. It's coming quite big. I'll select a different typeface. And then just make it a little bit smaller. Take it up here, press the tick. And then again, I can match it up. So it's the same angle. So it's 45. And then I can make it a little bit smaller. Always zoom in and you know, do your guides. I got that. Okay. So get the idea of uh, doing that. So that's how you would probably do something like that. And then we put some text in. So the first thing I think we need to do is we're going to have Queen B. So first of all, um, click again. And what we're going to do is type in text. and then uh, format it, okay? Once you've got that, um, you know, we can scale it here like that. I think it's a uh, um, different color, so I can go at the top and I can get black. There we go, and all I can do is alt drag the next one. So I can type in the next one. And then again, um, you know, change its color. And then finally, just make it a little bit bigger on that. Oops. Go from the corner, make it 
bigger, do the spaces. Now, what you would do is you would do this on a grid if you were doing it. So if I go back here, okay, so if I go back to the original, um, I've laid that out, so I just need to lay out some more information, uh, move it on, so I end up with something like this, and then just keep on going until I've added in all the information. Now, once I've done that, I need to go to the file menu. Um, I'd probably save one as a Photoshop file, but then I would do a save as. Um, I'm going to save it on my computer because it gives an option of saving it on the cloud. Lots of different options. In this case, I'm going to bring it in to um, InDesign. Maybe I want to print it. And the best format to use for that case would be a TIFF. So I'll name it and then save it. Just click OK to the next options.